This episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. Yeah. You know, because you sometimes you got to mow the grass. When you got to clean your springing. That's right. Choose Manscaped. That's right. No, not our best. It's not our best. Uh, don't our, your best. That yeah, was well, I don't want to be a... I don't, don't, like don't include me in your awful job. Yeah, I'm with you, All Jesse. for one and one for all. Uh, is that I right? don't know. <laughs> this season, make sure to groom the carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Don't forget about the Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0. Watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Remember, they've got a skin-safe blade, standard uh, basically for taking a little off the top but not catching skin. Yeah. Right? We don't want to do that. That no. doesn't feel good. Uh, there's also the brand new uh, dual LD LED lights that guide you through the darkest winter debris. Oh, dual! Yeah, well, because you need to see you need to you need to see the spotlights, right? You got to have, you know, one like, for each ball. Could be Jurassic Park <laughs> down there. You got to yeah. have spotlights on the Raptors, right? That's right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, wow! And if you hate making a mess, not to worry. It's waterproof, so you can shave in the shower, in the bath, or even in the ocean. I don't know why you'd shave in the ocean, but you can. You also got to mention the shed. The shed. Their new uh, box for the things that, that Manscaped They will deliver oh, an yeah. entire six foot tall garden shed <laughs> <laughs> made of wood and metal. The word I was looking for no, was is that not it? Toiletry bag. That's oh, right. Oh, that they have a is. new one now and it's called The Shed and it's awesome. And yeah, see, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with DANGLE. D A N G L E at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spot. Spring cleaning in your pants. SDP, the Steve Dangle podcast, with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. Back to back with travel, the game starts 23 hours after the Saturday night game against the Oilers. Starts. After the Saturday night game began. Yeah, which Bege I think is what I just said. Yeah, no, you said after the. So, sorry, what I mean by that is the game itself takes like three hours. Yes. So it's like 20 hours. Yeah. Oh, okay, after it ended. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And, and you know, the thing is that the Leafs did something really sneaky and smart. Um, Martin Jones was on the on the bench for them, um, but uh, uh, they sent Joe Wall to Carolina and said, why don't you just hang out here and get ready? I Can, can I like put my tinfoil hat on immediately? Mm -hmm. Someone is going to go to the league and go, wah, about that. I don't know what you can do about that. You you should be able to do whatever you need with well, your roster players. The Leafs got in shit for flying a prospect from Europe to North America during the off season on their dime. You're yeah, not allowed there's to do rules that. in the CBA for that. Yes. There's no rules in the CBA for sending a player ahead of time. Mm. So you're thinking Do we know that for sure? Yeah, so you 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 this would be a collective bargaining issue, and you think the next negotiations they stop this? That well, doesn't make sense. Well, I don't know. You're complaining about flying a prospect uh, to your own practice facility uh, in the off season. Like, why wouldn't someone wham about this? I it's, think it's, you're being a little pessimistic about that. I've, I yeah, <laughs> but like the pessimism is based in reality. The league is full of just leech teams who don't like are an absolute drag on the sport and league. So I would not be shocked at all to see someone complain about Adam. This. Did you expect to get hung up on Joseph wall uh, flying to Carolina? No, but I, I, I do think it's an interesting <laughs> point because there was someone's going to whine. Was there someone's not, whine. was there not the least for making their practice facilities available? Was, he, you yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. Just I wasn't listening because yeah. something else came in, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I do see some way coming up, but whatever they, they, they can do what they want. And, and I well, don't, and he was their best player. He was, he was, he, was he, that's the, that's really the story of this game that I want to talk about is how solid he was. Mm -hmm. By the end of the third period, Carolina's close to 40 shots and Toronto's maybe pushing 25. Like yeah, it was, yeah, it they, was lopsided. They, they caught up a bit uh, towards the end, but uh, well, that first period was murder. I think it was 16 to seven. Yep. Uh, Jake McCabe did not have a good first period at all. No. Nope. Um, but uh, they, they figured it out and they made it a game. And like uh, I, I had a tweet in the LFR video that was very optimistic uh, that I thought encapsulated the game perfectly from Anthony Petrelli, who uh, I usually like his opinions on the Leafs. If that's supposed to be the class of the East now, the Leafs should feel pretty good about where they are at. Wool kept them in the game, and they didn't outplay them, but nowhere near uh, their best versus a rested team at home and had a chance to tie there late. Can't win them all. Is Carolina class of the East? 
They're a point out of the President's Trophy right now. Like seven other teams. Yes, it's a seven. There are seven teams. We, we, and we're going to get into this later. Yeah, but. that are at 97 or 98 points. Right. Okay. And they're one of them. Yeah. So, you know, that's good. And it was, man, good for Carolina considering their goaltending issues this year. Well, and how good was Freddie? He was great. Like, as much as Joseph Wool saved the Leafs, uh, Freddie saved the Hurricanes. I want to say great, this. Great goalie duel. For Hurricanes fans, his blood clot issue... Um, you know, you never wish that on anybody, but it may have prevented him from playing too much, which is something that's always been an issue for him. He will never give the net up willingly. Well, they've and needed, we, they've needed goaltending. Right? They have, they have. And, and I think the fact that he's what now 10 and one on the year, he's having a great year it's and he's certain. rested. Yeah. I always wondered what rested Freddie Anderson would look like going into the playoffs for the Leafs. And he looks fresh. And if you just keep him rolling. Um, if you have a hot goal during goaltender going into the Stanley Cup playoffs, you're, I mean, usually teams do really well when that happens. It really does feel like um, <laughs> winning the Stanley Cup is like what? One third managing the regular season properly. Mm hmm. No. And managing key players properly. It's, it's a quarter managing the regular season properly, it's a quarter uh, understanding the rule book and getting away with murder. It's a quarter just getting hot at the right time, and it's a quarter being the best hockey team. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it's it if if you're in the playoffs, that puts you in the quarter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like anyone has a shot. I uh, you know uh, Cam Sharon used to work for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now he works for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Had a quote when he was still a blogger um, that I love dearly. The best Justin team Hall's actually good. No, I don't think he ever said that. Well, he might have. I think, have. He, I don't had, know. I think he did. But uh, the best team in hockey rarely wins the Stanley Cup. And I think that's, I think we know that. I think the tournament, what's great about the playoffs as a tournament yeah. is that if, because if the best team always won, then what's the point of watching? The, it's harder to be the champions than the best. Yes. And a lot of people are going to think that's uh, just wordplay. One day you'll understand. Yeah. It's harder to be the champions than the best. Now, we had Saturday night, Leafs versus Oilers. Steve does a stream. It's a big game. It's, it's a, a big huge game. game. It's a big game. And well, one of the things that we're looking out for early is, will Zach Hyman get his 50th goal against the Toronto Maple Leafs? He was too shy. It was, it was either by the end of the first period or the overtime winner. Right. Like, we all knew. Well, we all felt like we knew, but nope. he didn't. He, we, got, he four, got one. He did get 49. He got one. But he did not get fifty. I think that's. It. I I think it's it's so weird, right? Like who did he get his fiftieth against? Uh, I don't even know. The Sens. Yeah, yesterday. He's still a Leaf. He's still yeah, a Leaf. Good. Damn it, buried against that. <laughs> I I think I think what's what was great about this game is I feel like this team finally recognizes when a big game is a big game. And oh, that was a playoff game. Well, and 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 I think it stems from, and I'm going to go all the way back to their first meeting against Boston. Where Lilligren gets injured, and and you know Tre Living and Keith have to go in the next game the, before the next game and go, uh, this is not acceptable. You have to physically respond to these guys. Yeah. And all of a sudden, in the intermission panels on Hockey Night in Canada, I'm hearing the Oilers have got to get tougher against the Leafs. Which, like, I'm not used to watching the Leafs not be the second toughest team in a game, and I'm not used to watching the other team and go do something. I couldn't like I couldn't believe the instincts I was having. Like, I saw some people uh, criticize uh, Darnell Nurse for the penalty he took at the end of the second period mm -hmm. for going at Joel Edmondson. I think that was a great investment for the rest of the game because Edmondson was a pain in the ass. Well, you saw the cross night. checks on Drysidle, right? The cross. He was such a dick to Drysidle all night. And when he had some time to spare, he went after McDavid too. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was awesome. It's the the Leafs have they they have guys who are tough um, who will block a shot with their face and neck like Simone Benoit. They have guys who will truck you like Jake McCabe. What Joel Edmondson is is someone who makes your night long. They make your night shit. They make showing up to work a nightmare, and they just haven't had that. Like who? Especially on the back end, could you say the Leafs have had in recent years who's anything like that? I think my best comparable would be like a Roman Polak, but I don't think even he was that kind of physical. Like, no. He, like, could, he could throw a hit, but he wasn't like... But, but 
Bogosian? Like, yeah. it's been a long time since they've had someone who understands. Like, listen, cross checks are an art. They are. At least getting away with them, right? There's a way to do it, and there's a way to not do it. Connor Timmons showed you how to not do it. He took a cross checking penalty. But I like they there's that clip of Edmondson on dry sidle. And I'm watching it and I'm like, yeah, no, they don't call those. They don't call those in the playoffs. There's something about having enough push in a brute force cross check where they're like, no, it's a push off. Instead of just ramming a guy. <laughs> yeah. Which is often what it looks like. Which is, yes, there's such a subtle skill to it, and the Leafs get jobbed by it every single year. And this is one of the biggest, if you can't beat them, join them, uh, trades I've ever seen, except it, it's him joining the team that he beat. Jesse. Yeah. What did you think of Bobby McMahon and Pontus Holmberg? Oh, it's great. Like, what a luxury the Leafs have finally gotten to have somebody outside of the core four scoring. Like, they got four goals from Pontus Holberg and Bobby McMahon. Like, it's it's a miracle that they're in this position. And that's... Two Marlies. Two, two guys who played with the Marlies this year. Two guys who weren't like, hey, we got them at the trade deadline and now they're scoring all this stuff. Two guys just developed and came up through the system. And it's it's been a magical run for McMahon in particular, who's just been like, since that that point in January where, where he went off with that the hat tricks, you know, he's been unbelievable. And this is what they've needed for years is hmm. depth scoring. And if they get this in the playoffs, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can, can I can I say something here? You know, since since no one's listening. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all friends. Yeah. Right? A, a Jets fan friend of mine wanted me to tweet this. And I'm not going to because mm -hmm. I'm waiting. I'm biding my time. But with those two goals, Bobby McMahon is now two goals back of Pierre-Luc Dubois. Oh, wow. It's two, Bobby McMahon is two goals back of Pierre-Luc Dubois in 25 fewer games. Well, I think 24 now because of Carolina yesterday. Oof. Yeah, buddy. I'm going to wait until he ties him because mm -hmm. he's going to. And then I'll tweet it out right now. But now no, no one tell anyone this, okay? I, I mean, no I feel like that's a disservice to how Bobby McMahon has played because uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois has been that bad. Like Bobby McMahon has played really, really well at the back end of the year. Wow. 15, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Now we for, had for not an eight and a half million dollar player. We had no TJ Brody for the second game in a row. And I do think it's important to hear Sheldon Keefe again saying we want him to clear his head. We know he hasn't been himself. Now they did put Riley Brody back together last night against Carolina. Very briefly. Very briefly. Did see it though. But you know, no, no huge warts. Um, we uh, we left those uh, chocolate cupcakes at my in-laws. That's why I didn't do the bit. Mm. And I'm not going to. I don't want to. Well, it you might have gross. to. No. Did you gross. guys see um, Did you guys see the defense a little bit more like you wanted without TJ Brody there? Do you think that they can live without him? Unfortunately, so, yeah. Um, Riley Bush is, is a good pair. Edmondson Lilligren. Lilligren threw a friggin' hit last night. Like a good one. Who pissed in his cornflakes? What? Um, and then Benoit McCabe. Um, you can keep trying things that aren't Benoit McCabe. I'd prefer it if you stopped um, because that's clearly the answer. Um, and that leaves Brody without a dance partner. But last night in the LFR, I, I think I got it. Mm -hmm. um, la last year, the Leafs gave basically no indicator that they would go 11-7. Mm-hmm. And then it was basically, all right, the playoffs are tomorrow and we're going 11-7. I think they're going to do that again in these playoffs. Um, I think they're going to go 11-7. I don't know who they take out of the lineup. Didn't they only do that in the in the deciding game against Tampa? Like, uh, like they didn't, they, I don't think they started game one 11-7, did they? I don't know how many games in the playoffs they did it. Mm -hmm. um, they did do it in the deciding game. Mm -hmm. I know that because of that... Uh, um, Everyone went to hug Tavares, and the first player to hug Sammy was Eric Gustafson, <laughs> who I miss very much and took a UFC elbow to the face uh, this weekend from Sam Reinhart. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but having those pairings and then using Brody sparingly in special situations, I don't, I don't really see a problem with that. Or do you need to give, I don't know, Noah Gregor seven minutes a night that badly? 
You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, it's a good point. But again, I ask with TJ Brody, okay, so you're going to play him on your, as your seventh defenseman. With whom? Well, great question. You Sparingly with McCabe. Uh, sparingly with Is he a good Lilligren. penalty killer anymore? I don't think so. Not at all. So that's not at all. That's where my question is, is like, okay, that's great that you can do that. But like, and I get Noah Gregor or Nick Robertson when Yarncroak and Marner are back, you know, those guys are probably the most likely to leave the lineup. Maybe in a game you're trailing. Okay. Because you don't, you don't want the puck on like Riley Brody in a game you're trailing. I can accept. Um, I don't love it at all, but um, you know, if you're down two with, I don't know, five, six minutes to You've go. You've got a cheat offense. Well, do I want Benoit out there? Do I want Labushkin out there? Do I want Edmondson out there? Probably Lilligren. You would it. you would like Riley? You would like Lilligren? Uh maybe McCabe. Mm-hmm. And you'd probably, probably want, want Brody, and that gives you two pairs. Um no Bertuzzi on Saturday night as well against uh the Edmonton Oilers. So Domi draws in finally at PP one. Finally. That's such a good win. It was a good Dude, one. They were so shorthanded. Yeah, and then of of course later on in the game, he gets into a fight uh with his dad in attendance and they happen to catch somebody trying to be like, "Hey Ty." Eh, and they People and Ty insane. Ty looked like he was going to jump across the aisle at the guy. Leave him alone. I saw someone say like, "Why why wasn't he in the alumni suite or something?" God, f- fuck you. That's why. I want to watch the, from my seats. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I know I'm Ty Domi. Leave me alone. Like you, listen. You want to say something to him walking by? Hey, Ty, go Leafs or whatever. Yeah, love that for Max. Whatever. Only, only being drunk could make you want to make body contact with Ty Domi against his will. I get like, yeah. <laughs> Ty, flick. Also, that is annoying. You ever tried that? Yeah. Are you just doing that? It's kind it's, of annoying. It, oh, dude. Like, um. <laughs> I you introduced me to Ty Domi at yep. something. I don't remember what. It was at the Leafs practice facility. I don't remember what the event was. Some sort of alumni game or something like yeah, that. that I, I think you were in. I don't remember what it was. But he still has this way of looking at people where I was convinced he was looking at me trying to figure out how many bites it would take to eat me. <laughs> But that's not like, how he is in no, real life. No, like, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. Pretty affable guy. But yeah. there's a prehistoric, there's a look you have to, have to have. Uh, Bob McGill, uh, who owns the one of the most unbreakable records in the Leafs franchise, which is penalty minutes by a rookie. Jesse, can you look up what Bob McGill had in terms of penalty sure. minutes as a rookie? It's like 300. Um. I worked with him at Leafs TV and he used to talk about <clears throat> every time he went on the ice, he was the baddest man in the league. Hmm? He was the baddest man in the planet. Is that how he, he, saw, he saw it? Well, he's like, you oh my God, have 63. to 260, one, one goal, uh, one goal in Which 68 is games. down from his WHL total of 295 the year before. Like, look at that shit. Wow. So wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 okay, so, okay, okay, two, 263 divided by 68 games, he had 3.86 penalty minutes a night, which means he's fighting, like, at least, how many fights must he have had? A lot of fights, a lot of fights. 25, at least? Yep. Holy cow. No, but it, he talked about, and you might be like, oh, there are guys tougher than him. Yeah, but in your mind, mm-hmm. in your heart of hearts, every time you hop over the boards, you have to think you can beat your opponent. And that's the era that he grew up in. That dude started playing in the early 80s and he played into the 90s. What a bunch of basically criminals <laughs> yeah. he took the ice with each and every night. And he had to believe, you have to believe you're the baddest man in the league to even lace up your skates. Because otherwise, what are you doing? Ty Domi was the baddest man in the league. He didn't have to convince himself. He had trouble, I read this in his book, Shift Work, he had trouble sleeping before games. And he would say to himself, what's going on? Like, my adrenaline's not going. 
I'm not afraid. Like, I know I'm probably going to have to fight tonight, but I'm not afraid. What's going on? And what it was is he would carb load with two bowls of pasta for lunch. And after he finished playing, he got diagnosed with a gluten intolerance. No way. <laughs> yes. Wow. So this dude is trying to have a pregame nap. He's eating food he's allergic to and then going out and fighting someone who has six inches on him and beating the fucking wheels off of him. That's nuts. What and I would story. never think to tap that man on the shoulder is all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And and listen, Max, Max got into a, uh, him and Yanmark really went at it. Like there was a real a real tussle there. Boy, that was a lesson in fandom. Because I saw Oilers fans saying, well, Ty was mad because Max lost that fight. That's a lesson in fandom. Uh, you, I, I'm not a big uh, chirper when it comes to, oh, you see blue colored glasses or you have orange colored glasses. You must be on drugs or just be the biggest fan in the world to think Yanmark won that fight. Yeah, he didn't win. Holy cow. It's not even worth it. It's not even Also, like, inarguable. you don't need to make assumptions on what's going on in Taidomi's brain at the moment. Yeah. You see him for two seconds on a television screen. And he's getting yeah. annoyed you by somebody. You don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> I think he's thinking, don't fucking touch me. But yeah. But it, it could be something else. Like, <laughs> he's on for 0.2 seconds on a TV. Yeah. My, my, dad, uh, my dad got his autograph for me. Um, my dad used to work at uh, the, the buildings downtown, like, uh, on the path. Um, I think it was so either the Cadillac Fairview building or the Eaton Center. And he met Ty Domi and, you know, his son's a big Leaf fan. So he took the only thing that he had, which was this little agenda in his pocket. It's signed like 1996. I, I got to find it somewhere. And he said he shook Ty Domi's hand. And he's like, I don't know if he... <laughs> My dad never talks this way, but he's like, I don't know if he felt like he needed to do it this way, but he shook my hand and it was like a vice. Oh, wow. My dad has never said that about another human being. <laughs> Your hand disappears in his hand when you shake his hand. Yeah, my dad is like every boomer man. He thinks he could win every fight ever. He thinks he's Jack I, Reacher. And but I, then he <laughs> met Ty Domi and he realized, oh, maybe not. Do you think... Um, and, and for the Oilers' part, they they mounted a pretty good little comeback that you know made you sweat a little bit in the third period. Of course they because did. They're, they're the Oilers. The Oilers. Um, I, I like I don't take anything from that game and go, oh, well, the Oilers are bad or or the Leafs are the greatest or whatever. I just think it was a Saturday night matchup between two really good teams. I still think the same thing I've thought about the Oilers for three years. I don't think I've ever seen a team this gifted offensively that's this bad at defense. Well, so there was one thing that. Um, a few people pointed out, did you see the Evan Bouchard play where he... Boy, oh up? boy. Norris Trophy candidate, according to Jesse Blake. Now, Absolutely. He, should he should definitely be a Norris Trophy candidate. He should be in the conversation, but like we need... You know you know how they're trying to do like, oh, we should have the Bobby Orr for best offensive defense. And we should. Mm -hmm. And we should have best defensive defenseman. Yes. Yeah. They how do in the in the NCAA. Cade Weber just won best defensive defenseman. Yeah, yeah they split up the awards. I would like uh, best defenseman and best at defense because he ain't that at all. So which, that is, what, what play are you talking about? I will. I'll bring it up. Third goal. The one of him going into the corner. Yeah, uh, allergic to body contact. Yes, I will. I'm going to pull it up for you because uh, completely allergic. It's really good, and it's something that. Uh, I used to see Leafs defensemen do literally oh, yeah. all the time. And like one of the most dangerous players on the ice all night. The puck was constantly on his stick. He must have had 20 shot attempts. Yep. Um, and he had three assists in the game against Ottawa the next night. He is an extraordinarily gifted player. If I got to shut a game down. I have it. Adam. I don't even you have it. Look yeah. Sorry, I was looking okay. for. Uh, yeah. So here it is. So there's Evan Bouchard. And he's the, he's, he's a very player. good player. And let's fast forward a little bit where the puck gets into the corner. And you're going to see him here let up because uh, the Leafs have a player in. And I can't even I think it's that's Matthews. Austin Matthews. Is that Matthews? 34? Yeah, that's uh, is that what his number is? Um, mm -hmm. And he's just going to let Austin take it. It's his defensive zone. And so, he's just going to let Austin so take that. My problem with that is he's trying to I think he's just trying to hop around Matthews to make a play on the puck. I think he got. Yeah, he I agree. Tried to do too much like creativity in the moment. That's why I think like everybody's harping on for this, but he just tries to to get to the puck in a different way as opposed to just going after it with the body. What's funny is Willie does this all the time, with, where Matthews is the defenseman and Willie is the righty coming in and he avoids body contact and you go, Willie, what the f... But he's trying to make a play on the puck. But 
the play continues and he just doesn't do anything. Like after look, trying Look at number to 2 right that. now. Where's Look at number 2. And then best seats in the building. You know, <laughs> best seats in the building. Look. <laughs> and let me ask you, Steve, what is the difference between William Nylander and Evan Bouchard positionally? Uh, William Nylander is a winger. <laughs> Evan Bouchard plays right defense. And so when William Nylander's doing it, what zone is he doing it in? He's doing it in the offensive zone. So when you, and th this is the point, is that, I mean, listen, this is one play. This is one player. Shit happens. It's not like no, a crazy thing. No, we've been talking about him all season. Uh, no. But, but that, coaches don't like that. You got you to go hard at it, especially against Matthews, because Matthews is going to let something happen. If, it, if it's Noah Gregor, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I guess you let off. If they I win the Cup this year, which I still think they very much could, oh yeah, um, they're going to win it like n no team has done in decades. They, they're going to... Every game is going to be uh, every game from the Battle of Alberta series a few years ago, where the Flames said, hey, we can't do it either. And the Oilers uh, took advantage of that, and every game was like 5 4, 6 5, mm -hmm. 9 6 in, in one instance. And Stuart Skinner was like uncharacteristically pretty bad. Mm -hmm. he, he's had a much better second half, and he did not have a good night. I think there's individual parts of the Edmonton Oilers right now that are that need fixing. Well, one in particular is Evander Kane, who struggled a little on Saturday, and then he's got to be hurt. Right? They they don't want to call it a healthy scratch, but that's essentially what it was. Uh, he was useless. Knobloch called it a maintenance day, and the media took it as, "Oh, he's getting scratched." But everybody has injuries at this moment. You're you're scratching yeah. him so we can take care of his body, so he doesn't have to play the back to back and 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 get back up to speed. You and know. He was he was chirping someone on the Leafs. He said, go back to the middle of the bench, basically calling him the grocery stick. Um, and uh, then the very next night, he's a healthy scratch. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah. So I think like that's something they need to solve. He hasn't scored since uh, February 19th, which oh. is over a month. You know, he had a two goal game against Arizona, then hasn't scored since, which you don't have him there to score. But his time on ice since at the beginning of the year, he's playing like 18 minutes a night on average. Now it's down to about 16, you know consistently throughout the season is going down. I'm surprised it was that much. Now he's not scoring. Now he's a healthy scratch for maintenance. I think like that's in particular you need to solve that. Uh Ekholm has a bad penalty late in the game against Ottawa and that that they get the oh. power play and then they um they score the 4-3 goal and they win that game. Uh, uh Pickard wasn't great. Um no. Well, and also you don't have Ekholm on the ice. Who the hell's defending? Right. Yeah. Right, because you, like, you have limited uh, def defensive defensemen. Yeah, yeah. As if we, if we want to give out that award, so there's a lot of individual parts of the Oilers that they can out they can fix with their scoring. You know, like, they can they can overcome all of those things, but they need to solve those in the next couple of weeks. It if if Kane gets healthy and figures it out, what was the third line? I think it was Kane, Perry, centered by Henrique. Mm -hmm. <sighs> like Tampa when they were winning their cups, it was Maroon. Belmar in the middle and Perry. So you already have one piece of that. That line could and should be such a nightmare for opponents, especially when you're trying to shut down McDavid and company. That just seems like such a bad time. I wonder what they do in the playoffs because you split those top two lines up. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you're spreading it out a little bit more, and then you just have this extra line that is a pain in the ass battering ram. <laughs> who the f who wants to play this team really? The, but that's that's the idea, right? But then, like, you see a game like Saturday where they're just not playing well, was just not clicking, right? And they're making mistakes, and you're like, oh, so this isn't working. They were down five nothing, and I was still like, oh, hold your horses, <laughs> yeah. And and right, and I was thought, right. <laughs> some of that score effects because they're a very high scoring team, and when Leafs are up five nothing, they're going to sit back, and Edmonton's going to take advantage of that and all that stuff. And if it's a closer game, maybe it goes a little differently. They were a post away from making it five four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, shit. it got it could have got close there. Yeah, it was real close. Um. Um, I want to. I want to ask you guys about the least penalty kill. What do they do here? I know uh, Yarn Croak and Marner are good penalty killers, but what do you do here? Um, it just feels like uh, they're too easy to manipulate. Um, they do have to do a better job um, moving bodies from the front of the net and blocking shots. Edmondson helped with that. We saw that um, in the Oilers game, um, but they allowed another one. Well, the Oilers uh, didn't score a goal five on five on Saturday night. They scored two power plays and one six on five. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. 
Well, and then I mean, Carolina last night, same thing. That's encouraging one way. Yeah, well, the the only five on five goal Carolina scored was a really stupid giveaway from McCabe. That was weird. And then a power play goal goes off him. <clears throat> so I don't know how much I'm going to read into that. And they're two extraordinary teams um, in terms of it's Edmonton and it's Carolina. But man, this uh, like I know they got Connor Dewar to help with the penalty kill, and I really feel like they got to put some emphasis there and get him as much ice time as humanly possible because he's obviously not quite up to speed yet. I feel like he's getting better and better with every game, Um, but there's still just an ineffectiveness there and a confusion there between him and his teammates. Um, I mean, basically what you pray for is that uh, the amount of times you take a penalty that leads to a power play go down when the playoffs begin. But the whistles are always active in the first round, especially early in the first round. So it's going to be a factor. Okay. Uh, Super weird note. Uh, They did announce Zach Hyman's 50th goal during the Leafs broadcast last night. Maybe I'm being a pain in the ass, but I was like, he has been a Leaf for four years. Do we need to do this? We get it. He um, used to be a Leaf. Was it a national game? Well, it's on know. Sportsnet, so it's a national game against Carolina. It's a story. I don't know. It's a guy the Leafs let walk scoring 50 goals. It's a little odd to do it like the, the play-by-play did it, you know? Yeah. In the moment during play. It's not like they did. they waited till the intermission panel. I would do it. Like if play I was by free, play? Well, okay, so I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, when Sportsnet uh, <laughs> made me stream an Oilers-Habs game um, while Marner was going for a Leaf record against the Canucks, which mm-hmm. is just a bigger game in terms of audience, um, Marner broke the record. And forget me mentioning it, the chat was full of it. The chat's like, Marner broke the record, Marner broke the record, Marner broke the record, for a game that they weren't even watching. Yeah, because you're a Leafs guy, and all you did was stream Leafs games all season. They except for Leafs once. <laughs> yeah, except for so the ones I think that's completely different scenarios than yeah? we're watching uh, a Leafs broadcast, and they break in with an Edmonton Oilers player scored 50. Where was the break in for uh, Sam Reinhart? You know? Yeah, that's, like, that's fair. Yeah. Break in and tell us Sam Reinhardt scored 50 goals. Hey, guys, I know you were waiting for it. Here it is. Sam's got 50. That's it's, fair. It's a, it was a weird thing to do. Are they breaking into Habs broadcast to update, you know, Domi stats? Like, I, I'm they just, ought to. Well, it's... it's Bobby it, McMahon closing it, in on your ice, It would be nice. It would be nice if Sportsnet, if it, in a non... In a non-playing a Canadian team. I get it. Yeah. If you're playing a Canadian team, got to be neutral. But we're playing Carolina. Can you at least once pretend that your audience is from Toronto during a Toronto Maple Leafs game? Yeah, but isn't that them acknowledging it by talking about a former Leaf? I don't hate it, man. I don't hate it. Not my favorite. Don't think we'd see that anywhere else mm. for anything else. Okay, okay, you're a nay. Uh huh. I'm a nay. You're a nay. Yeah, I don't know. Maddie, yay or nay? Nay. I think it's weird. She thinks it's weird. Nay, you think it's, it's been, weird? It's weird. Been like what? At least a couple of years now. So well, later, twenty, right? Twenty twenty. Third season without him. Yeah, like, I think. It's just, yeah, no. Yeah. Ill-timed. Yeah. Is it Why, in the middle of the game, Steve. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm grateful you, for what like, he did you, here. I probably. assume you missed it like when it happened. Uh, Maybe you just didn't hear the play Isla play was the not having a good time. Yeah, so, so like, <laughs> it's so... I think it, it like when you're watching it, too, it came across weird. Yeah, I like, didn't hear a ton of the game that wasn't baby screaming. That's something you do at intermission when you're running the Like Yeah, Amber, yeah. Amber we'll does the highlights during intermission. Ah. Why is that not the note there? But he really shined like with the Oilers too. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like more, more of his legacy, I think, will be with them a bit. I don't know. I just I look at it as maybe it was something they were following the previous day, and they're like, oh, we actually do have an end, uh, a bookend to that story. He scored his fiftieth goal. That's fair. I don't know. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to be nice. I think you're stretching here. I think you're stretching. Um, here's another one. Here's a weird one, guys. Uh, according to Nick Barden. Of the, the hockey news and also of uh, the Marley Minute with yeah. LFR, uh, Matt Murray could be cleared for game action in April. That's not according not to Nick Barton. That's according to Elliot Freeman. Well, Freeman. I got it from Nick. <laughs> <giving> Elliot <laughs> shit. All right. <laughs> what do we think? Uh, not a chance. What for the Leafs? So the no way shot. the way it's outlined is that it seems like medically he'll be cleared early April and to avoid some 
all the cap shenanigans that would come along with that. He's probably going to have a conditioning stint in the AHL by the, and the, from the time early April happens to the end of the season. And then from there, salary cap doesn't matter come the postseason. So you can always have Matt Murray as an extra goaltender right. in like yeah. craziest scenarios. There's a possibility that he could sit there as the fourth goaltender. So that's it's a, it's honestly a good thing yeah. for the Leafs. If I'm not mistaken, conditioning stints are two weeks. Mm-hmm. So let's say he's medically cleared April 3rd. Their final game is April 17th. Exactly. He's on the conditioning stint for 14 days. That takes you to the last game of the season. Now you have four goalies plus Dennis Hill to be five. Yeah, that's the timeline that's that's been outlined. Pray you don't need all that. Yeah. But yeah. Do you go, okay, do you go with, if your order is Samsonoff, Wool, Martin Jones, who's four and who's five in your pitching rotation? Hill to be and... Uh, Murray's your last. Yeah, he hasn't played hockey for a year. That's a very long time to not play hockey. <laughs> I have one of the best goalies in the AHL who's friggin' enormous. Uh, like, Hildeby has faced NHL shots more recently than Murray. Yes. Like, in practice. Yes. And, and everything. Well, I mean, I'm sure Murray's working with the guys, but... Dude, he hasn't played in over a year. That's crazy. Yeah, but this isn't like this is such a non-story. It's not a. Thing. I just think it's, <laughs> it's cool. I, don't you think it's cool? It's good for him. That means he's going to get to continue his career as a. Yeah. Pro and that was yeah. always the plan. Is next year he wants to play on an NHL team somewhere? Yeah, I don't. Mm, I don't really know if it's going to work out that way. He's. I. I imagine he's going to have to sign as like a third, and he's going to be Martin Jones, right? Yeah. He's Martin Jones. Um. Hey, I have a long track record. Do you want me as your backup goalie? No, I don't, said all 32 NHL teams. But I'll be, you, you can be our third. Mm-hmm. And you turn into the backup goalie pretty quick, turns out, when you're a good third. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. All right, let's do the Bet MGM big story. Nathan McKinnon, known for being good at hockey, mm. is it, it's a 43 game. Home point scoring streak? Is that what he's at? Well, so there's seven games left. Okay. And he's scored in every... He has a, registered a point in every single home game so far this season. So far season. this season. Yeah. So the, and I think he, there was some going, going back right? to last year, too. Is, right? I don't know what extent to last year's yeah. a 43, yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. Does he do it? Well, Jesse, what do we have on uh, BetMGM? Because there is something you can bet on. Yeah, that's that's what you can bet on. You can bet on if he will record a point in every single home game this season. The odds are 3.75 times your money. I have a Steve question. Yeah. I have a Steve question. Uh-huh. What if they healthy scratch him before the playoffs? You think that if if he has the boss, the chance to score in 41 home games out of 41, they're going to healthy scratch him. I think it's going to be That is a ridiculous thing for for them to do. It happens all the time. No, but it, it, yeah, it happens all the time that somebody is on the verge of scoring in 41 and 41. It happens all the time that a player is healthy scratch. Who is on the verge of scoring in 41 and 41? In the final game before a playoff run. What does Nathan McKinnon want more, this record or the Stanley Cup? I think playing against the Oilers on April 18th. He didn't answer the question. He has to play against the Oilers. Will be fine. Oh, and it's the Oilers I too. Think, I has think to. Nathan McKinnon playing against the Oilers on April 18th and not being healthy scratched for that game will not determine whether or not the Avalanche win the Stanley Cup. Well, yeah, another thing you haven't considered, if what if he's so bad that he earns the healthy scratch? Then he probably would have not <laughs> registered a point up until that point. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. Uh, so you're not I taking cannot. you're not you're not taking this? No, what is it? 3.7? Yeah, 3.75, yeah. Times uh, your bet. I'm taking that. I think that's pretty You good. think it happens? Yeah. Adam? I think I think he plays for sure. Even if they play in 5 minutes. If he matter. plays then the answer is yes. I think I think I take that. I cuz here's the thing about Nathan McKinnon is you know damn well he's going to do everything he can to make it happen. There is no quit in Nathan McKinnon for any reason. Like he, he, you, I feel like he's at home eating broccoli, just staring, right now. staring lasers through it right now because he's so committed to this one thing. That's how he heats it up. Mm-hmm. Just, just, <laughs> just looks at it. Just shh. <laughs> Wow, Nathan, that's how he steams. It. You, you steam that broccoli so quickly. Now, I, if if it doesn't happen, uh-huh. I think I know the game where it doesn't happen. Okay, who shuts him out? So, so, so to finish the season, the Avs got at home Montreal, New York, Nashville. Rangers. Yeah, Rangers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's two New Yorks: Dallas, Minnesota, Winnipeg, Edmonton. 
If this streak ends, it is ending this Saturday against the Nashville Predators. Oh, man. The hottest team in the National Hockey League. Is you 2 going to end the streak? You see Soros in goal. They're playing great defense. They shut down Nathan McKinnon. Point streak ends. But if he gets past that game, I think he does it. He's going to anger his way. He's going to anger that puck into the net. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I got something to watch on Saturday. If Nathan McKinnon looks at a puck a certain way, it will grow feet and walk into the net. Jesse, are you taking it? Yeah, I'm going to take it. You're going to take the I think it happens. Now go to betmgm.com slash dangle for all your betting needs, uh, especially as we get into the playoffs. Remember, BetMGM is the king of sportsbook, and you can be the king too. This episode is brought to you in part by BetterHelp. Mm. You know, listen, it is it is that time. Steve, let me ask you, how's your sleep been? It's not good. What <laughs> happens when your sleep's not good? I feel sad. Yeah, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> I can laugh about it. I have tears in my eyes from yawning. But yes. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes sometimes the things that become overwhelming uh, are they feel like a mountain, but maybe they're a molehill or maybe they are a mountain. And you just kind of have to figure out a way through it. And it's good to have an extra set of eyes, uh, an extra set of ears in this particular case to kind of go, okay. Extra set of fingers. Yeah, that toes, too. Toes, belly button. The full body. The full, the, all the faculties. You type with your nose. That's right. And you can you can do any of that uh, with BetterHelp. Basically, it's nice to have somebody else, like a therapist, to bounce things off of. The great thing with BetterHelp is you're going to be matched with somebody very quickly. Right. It's 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 much, much faster than it than it takes normally to get a uh, therapist. And of course, you can do this over text. You can do this over FaceTime. Uh, you can do it over the phone, whatever works for you. And if you want to learn more, go to BetterHelp.com slash SDP to get 10 percent off your first month. That again is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. Um, in the standings right now, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven team race. For number one. That's crazy. We have the Vancouver Canucks and New York Rangers at 98 points apiece. And then Florida, Colorado, Carolina, Dallas, and Boston. What is 97. the wins discrepancy between the team with the most wins and the team with the least? Team with the most wins is the New York Rangers with 47. Team with the least wins, Boston Bruins, because they have 15 overtime losses. They have 41 wins. That's right. The next closest to the Boston Bruins in terms of overtime losses is are the Dallas Stars with nine overtime losses and Vancouver has eight. So um, they're separated by one point in the standings and six wins. <laughs> yes. It's quite the gap. I think uh, I, I, I think this is the issue with the loser point for me is is that I'm, I'm going back to what Jesse said. Why don't we just do wins and losses? Because ultimately you, you don't advance because you lost in overtime in the playoffs. So why are we why are we doing this? It wins and losses or three two one, and I feel like they would rather do wins and losses than three two one. Yeah, three two one's too complicated. I've seen the adjusted standings too. Three two one doesn't change much. Really? I, yeah, no. That's surprising. It leaves them pretty similar to and what you're at. It still rewards losing. Yeah. Why are we rewarding losing? Like you know, it's crazy. Um, if you went to overtime. You've, so you've already guaranteed yourself a point, and there's no, there's no way that the game hasn't been decided. I think that's weird. Like even before the shootout, when you go to overtime, you were not guaranteed. You you were guaranteed a point, weren't you? Yeah. Before the shootout, yes, yes, you were always guaranteed a yes. point. Yeah, because okay. it was a tie. I think that that's strange. I think that's a really strange way to do things. It's like why this league for so long de-emphasized goal scoring, right? It's like ah, let's get let's score less goals. Let's shut it all down. Who needs that? I want six shots in a period. And and what they found is, wow, the more scoring goes up, the the more people are like, wow, this is exciting and entertaining hockey. I don't I don't get this. I respect the Boston Bruins, and I'm not di- dissing the Boston We've Bruins here. We've seen enough of them that we know they're good. <laughs> but who do you think takes it? Vancouver, New York, Florida, Colorado, Carolina, Dallas, and Boston. Uh, Vancouver, New York, Florida have all played 71 games. Carolina, Dallas, and Boston have played 72. Who do you like? Oh, man. <laughs> well, I like them all. Um, Points percentage is not that crazy. Between the, the, the spread between them is Vancouver at 690 and Boston at 674. I'm going to say the Rangers or Panthers. Yeah? Yeah. Although ugh, Colorado has this thing about them where they won't be denied. 
I, I had my fantasy season ended um, because I needed Georgiev and the Avs to lose. They were down 4 nothing, and they came back and won 5-4 in overtime because uh, you can't rely on the Penguins for anything. Did you see Sid's goal, though, guys? That oh. tip? That tip at the side of the net? How do you how do you blow a four nothing lead to Colorado and not want to leave at some point? Like I'm sorry. Like I didn't the Leafs blow a pretty good lead against the Colorado three nothing. They blow a four one lead. No, no. But the difference is they were en route to the playoffs and ah shit we blew one game. This is very much a trend for the Pittsburgh Penguins. They are going nowhere at breakneck speeds. They are thirty thirty and ten. I just thought that was a cool record because it's very round. That is also 10 more losses than wins. Your fans, if they watched every game, would be mad at the end of 10 more games than they were happy. Yeah, you're 30 and 40. That's real, real ass. <laughs> that sucks, dude. Yeah. They're barely... like Here, wait. Let me throw on my glasses, make sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing. They're clinging to a tier of teams, right? So there's... The playoff teams, mm -hmm. there's the teams that are in um, the playoff hunt, and then there's this, the teams who stink. And the Penguins are sort of in a no-man's land between the teams that are in the hunt and the teams who stink. The Blue Jackets, Habs, and Sens all stink. The Sabres are not really in that conversation anymore of contending for the playoffs. Neither are the Devils. Isn't that funny? Last week we were talking about the Sabres charging hard. And now you got the Islanders who are on life support, the Red Wings, Caps, and Lightning. And I guess you could throw the Flyers in there as well. Yeah, the, the Flyers are a lot closer to stinking than contending. The Flyers are in a like dangerous spot right now because it looks like if Washington can keep this up, they'll pass the Flyers for that third spot in the Metro. And the Flyers are going to drop down the second wild card. And once they're there, like who knows if Detroit can win a couple more games here and take that spot. Oh, and Detroit's not like they lost again. Mm -hmm. Weekend, they lost again. After you, after you, after you, after it's you. After crazy you. It's a Canadian standoff. So who do you give it to? Who do you give it to, guys? Who the, are you giving the it to? The President's Trophy. Yeah, Rangers. Rangers. Jesse. Rangers. What do you the think? Vancouver Canucks were my number one pick, uh, but the Colorado Avalanche, amongst all of those teams, are the hottest. I believe it's nine in a row they've won. Good oh my lord. God. Uh, they're probably my second pick. If anybody, okay. if the Canucks don't hold on, it's probably going to be the Avalanche who take it. Nine in a row in Toronto. If you had a nine a nine game win streak, it'd be oh. like it'd be like they'd build a statue. We still talk about the ten game win streak the Gilmore team had. I'd be like, incapable. That's of, regular in Colorado. It's like oh, this happens all the time. I'd be incapable of having a bad day. Simply, I, I couldn't. Simply could not. Yeah. How, how much you sleep last night, Steve? Thirty minutes. <laughs> Thanks for asking. I'm going on a coffee run. You do want you, a coffee? Do you guys think any? Do you think any wins or losses that? The Penguins incur the remainder of the season matter at this point. Yeah, because yeah. if they keep losing, their draft pick goes higher because they're going to keep it this year and not uh, relinquish it because it's top 10 protected. So what they want to do is keep losing as much as possible so they can get the higher pick because next year that pick's going to go to San Jose. So you got to say, be unwatchable, boys. Yeah, right now they should be on, on in tank mode. And you can't tell Crosby that because he had no. points on all four goals. You can't, you can't tell Latang that. You can't tell Carlson that. You can't tell Malkin that. You can't tell any of those guys that. But that's how they should be. I don't know if you have to tell Latang that. Well, okay. Dude, is he's, the worst case he's scenario not here, doing great. Is the worst case scenario here the Penguins finish with a draft pick at 12? And then... No, like, that's, that'd be decent because then it's not theirs, right? So you're yeah, saying they would relinquish the 12? Yeah, twelve goes to San Jose. Yeah. Right? And oh, they wouldn't have a choice. You're and right, then you're yeah. and then you're fine because then next year you, you can tank if you want. Oh, That's, I because then next year you get your draft pick, right? So you so want to win. I think either you want to buy. The worst case scenario is you finish ten, and Dude, then you got to keep that ten yes. draft pick, right? Stop trading for Eric Carlson. This is you know this is how the Sens got Tim Stutzler, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Sharks traded a first round pick, they were ass. And it turned into the third overall pick. Mm -hmm. It was Tim Stutzla. Yep. Yeah. Now, this is after the Sens uh, uh, did the same thing and ended up giving up Bowen Byram Ooh. Uh, in the Matt Duchesne deal. But they, they Uno Gerard, reverse card and got out of it. And Sam Gerard, too. No, or is that the Predators? Predators draft Sam Gerard? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, he was in dude, the trade tree for that. I I already did it and it needs an abundance of updating. <laughs> There's some good players in there. It's a big big deal yeah, cause, and like Colorado when they nail a deal, holy shit. Like the the Lindros trade which was obviously Quebec, but same franchise. That um the the loop didn't close on the Lindros trade tree until like I started making LFR videos. Like Brad Richardson, I think, was part of it. And we watched him play during the cap era. They they rode that trade for a very, very long time. And every cup uh, they've gotten uh, up until the 2022 one has that trade's fingerprints on it. So currently the Pittsburgh Penguins sit ninth in terms of like if the draft order were exactly as it's percentage. And out. the lottery balls don't fall their way. So they would like keep that. this year's pick yeah, right now. If it's ninth. And it's, it's the, the reason I bring this up is because if you are Pittsburgh, like what is I, I'm trying to figure out what their strategy is going forward. Obviously, having a first round pick is is great. Anytime you have one, anytime you have one. Sure. That's great. It's a lottery ticket. You never know. It's going to be great. But it's interesting, Jesse, what you bring up about that San Jose trade, because if they're going to tank next year's got to be the year. Mm -hmm. If they keep the pick this year, I have to wonder if they will tank next year. They're not. They, they can't tank. They cannot tank. They can't tank for at least another two years, depending on how this draft lottery goes. They can't do it. I think that hockey might have other... Like, it's nice that you... It's Sorry, nice that we all they think can't that. tank on purpose. <laughs> right. Like, But right. I think the way that hockey is played and the way teams are built are going to have something to say about that, no, which is you're not good enough. Well, it's like you can't accuse the Sens of tanking this year. They were just bad. Yes. Right. Right? Like, they had yeah. tanking uh, uh, forced upon them. That's right. There you go. <laughs> That's right. That's Much right. Much like Jerome McGinley retirement. How dare you, both of you? I think the Penguins right now are one of the fascinating teams in the NHL. They're one of those interesting stories. You're like, what are you going to do? No, I think the most fascinating conversation with them is what number does Max Celebrini wear for them next year? You think they're going to get it? Yeah, that's how it works for them. <laughs> that's they'll how it works. For they'll them. win the lottery with like 2% odds? Yep. That's how it works for them. And I, if I'm the Ducks... I'm going to throw something I at the fold. wall. If I'm the Sharks. Yeah. Well, the Ducks were second place to getting Crosby. Yes. Mm -hmm. They were second place to getting Bedard. So the, the way this is going to work out is they're going to be second place again this year. Didn't Leo Carlson get injured this this weekend too? Uh, He's fine. He's okay. Okay. Yeah. He's fine. What, you know what would be incredible is if the draft order was 1-2 Penguins Ducks again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> It could be. It could That'd be. That'd be awfully depressing for Ducks fans. Yeah, I mean, they did get a cup out of that the per, the per, person who they got the first round pick with. Like, did, didn't it, wasn't that Getzlaff? Was that Getzlaff? Wasn't he right after Perry? No, no, they got uh, Bobby Ryan. Bobby Ryan. That was that was two thousand. Oh, five. Yeah, uh, six. Oh my god, five. It was two thousand five. They got Crosby. No, um, the Ducks. I think it was two thousand three. Got Getzlaff and Perry in the same first round. Mm -hmm. The San Jose Sharks have a goal differential of negative 130 right now. Modern. The next closest is the Chicago Blackhawks of negative 99. Woo! And the Anaheim Ducks at negative 78. That's pretty wild. That's There's some bad goal differentials. Interestingly uh, enough, a team like the Seattle Kraken are a negative 21. The Ottawa Senators are a negative 24. I believe, are the Washington Capitals not like a negative? Yeah, negative 27. Yeah, it's wild. Mm -hmm. Wild. And they're going to make... They're looking like they're going to make. You watch a game like the one that happened on Sunday, where they handle the Jets in three nothing. Yeah, Charlie Lindgren's. I don't know where this came from. Like, I don't think anybody anticipated Charlie Lindgren to be this great of a goalie. But he's where he was at the beginning of the season. Yeah, he was unbeatable at the beginning. And now, and now he's back. And the Jets are a very good team, and they took care of business. Well, they had the best trade deadline of any team in the NHL. They lost Joel Edmondson. They gained Alexander Ovechkin. <laughs> yeah, they. He's scoring from a certain date. Uh, I saw this on Twitter yesterday at a 60 goal pace. <laughs> like, he's just like, oh, can't hit the broad side of a barn. I stink. I'm washed. I'm Ovi. Yeah. Like, like, he just had his Popeye spinach or whatever it is, and he can't stop scoring. Do you see the friggin' goal he scored yesterday? The one he stole? He stole yeah. it! Yeah, he did. I'm going to put my stick in front of that stick, and it's my goal. You see him on the bench? Oh, yeah, yeah. Where he's like, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> he's hilarious. Yeah. Like, he's not apologizing for it, though. No! Last 18 games, he's got 12 goals. Stop. Yeah. Stop. It's unreal. It's, he's, uh, there was that Mark Spector tweet going around, like, oh, we're going to celebrate OV hitting 20 goals now. 
Uh, he's going to screw around and like... It, he might he's got to be at, uh, flirting with 30 at this point. So far this season, uh, Alexander Ovechkin has 26 goals. So he's going to be a 30-goal scorer once again. At least. There I said. At least. Like, it's, it. We're not even going to look at this season uh, at the end of his career like it's that big of an anomaly. I, I do want to throw out there that when we did our predictions when he started scoring, we're like, what's he finished with? I did say 35. And I there you go. At 35. Even in the, the 16-17 season where Ovechkin struggled, he scored 33 goals. This season, wow, man. he could easily hit that mark. 16-17 when the Capitals struggle. Oh, wait, they won the President's Trophy. <laughs> Man. Man. Yeah, with his very weak regular season of just 33 goals. Like, Man. he's the greatest goal scorer of all time. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. like when you adjust for era. Yeah. Like, he played in an era where no one scored. Exactly. And uh, missed parts oh. of a season or a COVID season, lockout. He missed his whole rookie strike, season. Full season. Yeah. He was drafted in 2004. He should have been in the Caps lineup in 04 05, mm -hmm. but there was no season. Steals a Calder from Crosby because they go head to head because they should have had separate first years, right? 100%. Yeah. yeah they shouldn't have been rookies at the same time. <laughs> but the same year they entered the league at the same time. Yeah. Um, what a career he's had. I, I, I actually, it's great that you guys bring that up because Tango Tiger on Twitter uh, put this up and it's NHL scoring uh, average per game by era. And it's a full graph from the start of the NHL to now mm -hmm. of scoring. And I just thought it was interesting to see it like from, you know, you see a big spike in the 1920s. Um, yeah. Uh, it's in your, Jesse, I just sent it to you via text. You know what that spike is, by the way? What? The forward pass. Oh, I guess that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, the guy who's, I think his name's George Hainsworth. He's third all time in shutouts. Uh, more than half of his 90-plus shutouts are from before the forward pass. Right. I would imagine it would make things trickier. Uh, just a bit. Although the Leafs would have been just fine. Their zone entries in the in the back pass years would have been Oh, perfect. yeah. That back pass a palooza. The Leafs would be all over that. Babcock like, I love this. <laughs> all right. Keith, too. So pull this thing up. Yeah. There now, you obviously wow. you notice there where Wayne Gretzky uh, starts and where his last scoring title is. But it's crazy to look at 2005... Right, right after the lockout, mm -hmm. just after there, there's a little bit of a spike, and then it goes down. And all of those years up to 2015, it was like it was worse than what we call, or just as bad as the dead puck era. The 2010s, in goals per game. almost the entirety of the 2010s, were the lowest scoring seasons in the NHL since basically the back the Korean War. Yeah, like <laughs> like the 50s. I'm serious. Look yeah. at it. Mm -hmm. Like like and it was it it fell to dead puck then the lockout happened then there was a spike and the spike was let's change the rules to have more penalties should we give the players time to adjust nope we're gonna let them bully us and whine their way out of having to abide by the rules and we're gonna dial it all back ushering us into the lowest scoring most hunk of crap uh era we could possibly have like crosby this is part of the reason Crosby's one of the best players of all time. Like, Ovi is going to break Gretzky's record uh, for goal scoring out of that era. Crosby's a top 10 point getter all time in that hunk of shit era. That's what I mean. These are two like of the best players. Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin, that rivalry was overhyped into oblivion, and yet they exceeded expectations in every way, shape, and form. Both of those went players. to war in the playoffs. Yes, against each other, dueling hat tricks. Both won cups. They combined for four cups, those guys. And there might be more. There might be. It's still possible. If Ovi gets in the playoffs, there could be. You never know. And and got to be the hot team in the playoffs, Crosby right? Crosby also. Um, but uh, yeah, like uh, it's it's crazy what both uh, Crosby and Ovechkin were able to do in that time. in that. Awful, awful, awful era. Like we 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 look at the scoring now, and it's still we, only at like 1995, 1994 levels. Look at how much higher the 80s are. We're talking like almost a full goal per game more, three quarters of a goal per game more, excluding empty netters. That's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's so exciting about it is that I mean it's down a little bit technically this year, but um, the, the reality is we have a long way to go. 
in terms of how much more scoring there could be. And I don't see anyone complaining. I don't see anybody upset about the fact that uh, goaltending save percentage is down league-wide. Ah, that oh. sure sucks. I miss the days of, um, who was the goal, Calgary, and goal, uh, Calgary goalie who had like a 198 goals against average? Mika Kipperson? Yeah. Like, it's like crazy numbers. He Like a 930 save percentage. I bring this up all the time. There was a game when I was a kid where the devil scored in the first two minutes and the game ended one nothing. <sighs> It was one of the worst experiences in my life. I've uh, any like, what's the worst class or tutorial or commute you've ever had? How I, do you sell that? I enjoyed that game less than that. I remember that Leafs. Uh, I referenced it earlier, but there was a second period for the Leafs in the in the playoffs against the New Jersey Devils, where they had six points or six shots. Wasn't it like game? That that, that was an entire game. Entire game, six. It was shots. a game seven. The Leafs set the record for the lowest shot total in a playoff game depressing i remember watching so it. yeah their their chokes uh, are not limited to the bruins <laughs> no no it's tim's 60th anniversary and roll up to win is back and to celebrate you can get big prizes like an all-electric volkswagen id4 imagine never having to fill up your tank again mm -hmm. wouldn't that be great i'm imagining it i'm picturing it i want that life we could take that beautiful suv all the way down to san diego Drive it all yes, the way can. down. Would you drive all the way? Who driving it, driving it, driving it down. <laughs> that's that's what I would be would doing. Would you be, okay, Who of the three of us, who would do the majority of the driving if we're driving down? Me. You think so? No, I don't know. Jesse, would we let Steve drive the speed limit the entire way? I think so. Yeah? I think driving the speed limit is important. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. No, Adam, Adam Wall is a speed demon. I don't think I'd trust him to drive us to San Diego in that uh, Volkswagen. Well, I wouldn't need to. Because I'd be taking the plane with my $10,000 daily jackpot. Oh. <laughs> it's financial. I'll meet you at the Hilton. A sun-soaked Hilton vacation. Also available with roll-up to win. I want the Hudson Bay gift card. Ooh, Hudson Bay has so much good stuff. It does. You walk in there like, I didn't even know I need this. You know? Right. You yeah. walk in there, and you like, walk yeah. out with something. It's a couple hundred bucks. And you're like, ah, yeah. darn it. So you can earn <laughs> rolls on your Tim's faves, including hot or iced coffee, breakfast sandwiches, loaded bowls, and more. And make sure to play on the Tim's app available for download on the App Store or Google Play. It's Tim's 60th anniversary of Roll Up to Win. And it's now on till March 31st. Time to get rolling. Rules apply. Canada only. No purchase necessary for contest entry. Visit the Tim's app for details. We're in our cybersecurity era. We're protecting our information. Is that the era? That's the era we're in. You know, listen, everybody's got their era. Taylor Swift's got her eras. We got ours. It's giving cybersecurity. It is. NordVPN.com slash dangle. And we're going to give you a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four additional months for, for free. It's completely risk-free. Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee is kicked in, and you get an extra free gift with every plan, uh, every two-year plan purchase. And check this out. If you get the plus plan, we're going to give you a a $10 Uber Eats voucher. Oh, wow. You get the complete plan. You get a $30. And an ultimate, you get a $30, which is pretty sweet. So while you're streaming uh, Mexican streaming services. That's right. Because they have some of the best uh, uh, catalogs that I've encountered on vacations. Um, you can get some food. Why is that, by the way? I don't know. The, all the rights that are distributed like w worldwide, they're just weirdly distributed funny. And some countries have better... Uh, streamer services than us. You don't even need to worry about the answer to that question because <laughs> you have ignored yeah. VPN. <laughs> <laughs> and now remember, 5,000 plus server options, so no show is out of your reach. NordVPN.com slash dangle. Again, that huge discount. Four additional months for free with your NordVPN plan. And remember, it's completely risk-free. 30 days, money back. Conference. All right, one thing we forgot to hit, uh, John Tortorella was asked about Felix Sandstrom's performance. Uh, this is his reaction during his press conference uh, post-game. Felix Sandstrom wasn't too happy with his performance. He just felt like he missed a couple there. Did you feel like he could have given you some more subs? And for everybody listening, that is John Tortorella banging the table twice, the podium twice, and then walking out of the press conference to end it. You know you don't have to treat people like that, right? Yeah, this is where Torts loses me. And he does this. Every team he does this with. Um, and he's going to do it on a bigger stage in Philadelphia, just like it happened in Vancouver. Um, and, you know, you saw it happen when it unwound in New York, and you saw it happen when it unwound in Tampa. 
there are things that this coach does that are really, really intelligent, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Couturier, the deeper you dive into the numbers, you're like, okay, I, listen, I get it. I get it. I don't get him not talking to Couturier about it, mm -hmm. uh, but I get why he was scratched. I completely get that. Felix Sandstrom feels like crap right now. And well, I mean, he was bad and he was bad. And the, the Flyers reporters like, hey, did, well, he's trying to get him to say something about it. And I know that Torts is frustrated, but part of being a good leader is being in control of your emotions. And as a head coach, you got to be a leader. And it, I get I love when Torts is like when the team's bad and he gets out there and he's like, they were bad. And here's that what they were bad. And this is what we got to work on with Sandstrom there. It's like, dude, you're lucky to be in the playoffs at all. Your goaltending stinks. You know that. Everybody knows your goaltending stinks. Goaltending's terrible. And it's been bad all year. And you've got, found a way around that. There's a way for him to answer that where he could still say, yeah, he wasn't good. And I need him to be better. And that's all you have to say. I'm I'm trying hard to find the quote. And I, I can't. But um, Torts goes, it'd be nice to get a goddamn occasional save. <laughs> and he okay. was... And he was talking about John Graham. Yeah. And that quote is from like 2007. <laughs> I was about to say, what, Tampa. what year? Is John this? Graham. It was, it was in Tampa. Holy it's cow. from like the first year of LFR. Oh my gosh. Like, the, like uh, listen, there's something to be said about being your own man, being mm -hmm. your own person. And he is certainly that. John Tortorella is free. He's free. He doesn't, ha he doesn't have a uh, moment in his life where he's like, you know, what if, what if I offend someone? <laughs> no. Um, but like, listen, uh, I think there's something to be said because, you know, whenever you talk about Torts being an asshole, and he is, he's an asshole. Whenever you talk about John Tortorella being an asshole, people talk about the nice things that he does. And, you know, he's helped out this kid and he's done this charitable initiative. And that's good. It's yeah. good that he All did that's that. Good. It's good that he did that. Um, but, um, you know, you encounter so many people in your life and there are the people who mean something to you, your family and everything, and you're not an asshole to them. Mm -hmm. Why would I be an asshole to them? They're my family. And then there's people who need you, right? The, you know, people in society who need our help and you're not an asshole to them. Why would you be an asshole to them? Of course not. But everyone else he's a miserable prick every member of the media apparently a big old bunch of his players if you're not a part of his life like it, it's it's one thing to be like i i don't need to waste my time on this i don't need to do this i don't need to do that but he's just an asshole and and my question is this is a player he'll have to play again right felix sandstrom is gonna have to play some some hockey. Yeah. Um, how is this getting the best out of him? Uh, uh, Felix Sandstrom's not supposed to be in the NHL. That's the other thing. Like you're setting this guy up to fail already, and the, and well, like I I praised Sammy Erson, and I know Tortorella has done that recently too, because uh, like both those goalies are in an impossible position, like possibly unprecedented. Yep. Um where uh, the team's starting goaltender, oh, sorry, you don't get him for the rest of the season. Why is he hurt? No, he can't because of the police, right? And they have Cal Peterson. I don't know if he's hurt or what. But, like, what, there's no offense to Felix Sandstrom. Like, there's, there's no evidence over the course of his professional hockey career that he should be putting up good numbers in the NHL. So what's your what – what are you pounding your hands for? Are you, are you criticizing the GM? Is this a shot across the bow at Danny Breer, who were all starting to put together, like connect the dots that he made you name a captain when you didn't want one and you're undermining your boss, essentially? Like, is, is that what's going on here? You don't have to be an asshole. Sometimes you can be. Like Rick Bonus. It's okay to after be. It's, you can be. After Winnipeg took on Vegas, and by the way, I don't think anybody at the time really knew what Vegas had, right? Kn knew what, what kind of playoff team they were going to be last year, right? No. Um, Ve well, Jesse did. Jesse did. Jesse's Jesse. The, Jesse was prescient <laughs> yeah. in that. There's no question. When that happened, you were like, Rick Bonus after game five and, it, and it, the season ends is like, this was bad, mm -hmm. and they were bad. Mm -hmm. And I also don't think that 
that anybody knew how good the Jets would come out this year and how good they've mm-hmm. been this year. No one would have predicted that either, mm. right? Except for maybe Rick Boness, who was expecting more from them. I liked that. And I liked that guys like Blake Wheeler didn't like that. Mm-hmm. That's how I knew it was time for guys like Blake Wheeler to go. Mm-hmm. And well, and now he's on a team that might win the President Trophy. That's and right. Trophy. And he was playing great. But it was, yeah. you know, sometimes it's just time to go. With, with, with Torts, it's always, it's like, there's times where I'm like, I agree, I agree, I agree. And then, and then you could tell he's living in this frustration for like weeks at a time. Mm-hmm. And when he does that, he does stuff like this. And I just don't see how it helps Felix Sandstrom. Now, there's no me, growth. Me saying that, he'll probably go on like a U2 run after this. I don't know. He'll be like 12 0 2 the rest of the year. Well, well, then being an asshole is the way to go, and everyone should be an asshole. And I'm not saying you got to be nicey nice with the guys, but no. like that Felix Sandstrom had, I think the last time he played in the NHL, I'm looking at his numbers here. He played 20 games for the Flyers last year and had an 880 save percentage. And now yeah. it's, and now it's 823 like, save percentage in 5 this year. He's not supposed to be playing at this level. He's not a goalie at this level. Now, I guess the defense is what are you supposed to say? <laughs> Just say we're going to need more from him. Move on. That's it. You know, you know who's the coach of a team that's in contention for the President's Trophy and might mess around and win a cup this year? Rod Brindamore, mm-hmm. um, when his team was giving him the worst goaltending literally in the league, was like, nope, we're better than this. It's uh, we, we have to do better as a group. And then they have. And they've gotten better goaltending since. Now, the opposite happened for Ottawa because they stuck up for their goalies and they continued to stink. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's an example of it working. Um, Like, the the trying to fight Bob Hartley and refusing to leave the bench for a ref, like, we would not tolerate this. Uh, We would not stick up for this behavior from anyone who wasn't as entertaining as Torts. He's an he's an entertaining asshole, and I I, th- I just think we're at that part of the season where he's getting miserable, and it, it, I I'll be honest with you, like even before this, like Maddie brought it up, she's like, hey, you know, you guys should you guys should talk about that, and I was like, Ugh. like we got to do this again. Who who out there? What former coaches or active coaches have former players that come out and publicly blast them? Just Babs. It's a very, very small group of guys. I think Grabowski bashed Randy Carlisle. Uh, Called him an idiot. Yeah, and, but that's like one guy. It's like him and Kuhleman. Yeah. Like, it's Babcock. It's Mike Keenan a bit. Oh, yeah. The Mike Keenan stories. Are it's Michelle bad. Terry in a bit. Yep. Brandon Dubinsky coming out and criticizing Babs. Or Babs. <laughs> whoops. Uh, Torts when he did. Like, I don't know. I don't know when he was when he's trading barbs with Brooksy, you know, like I, Tortorella is somewhat of an entertaining guy. Like, I, I, dude, I love watching clips of his, but that one, it's just you're being a prick. Mm-hmm. You're, a being, you're being a prick because uh, who gives a fuck about all those guys, right? It's I don't know. I agree. I'm with you, Jesse. Couple I, more I think every care? reporter should stand uh, should sit, sit there in silence. A uh, couple more things from the weekend that we missed. Uh, Jonathan Druin, oh, an unbelievable yes. game. Uh, yeah. The game we talked about earlier against the Pittsburgh Penguins where they stormed back. Two goals, one assist for Druin in that comeback. He's on pace to match or pass his career high in points. Uh, he's at 46 points. Career high is four, 53. There's a guy who took less money to go play with somebody you knew he was going to have a great season with. So great to see Druin come back and uh, have this type of season with the Avalanche. It's uh, it's not a charity case. Like he's nope. he's he's gone there and he's done his thing. He's he's been absolutely and incredible. The, the first like nine games, he had like one assist. Yeah, he mm-hmm. had. Uh, well, he's had a couple lulls this season, but um, you know, we talk about the teams that are the best contenders are the ones who get hot at the right time. Mm-hmm. He and the Avs are getting hot at the right time. Uh, Sam Reinhart in pro sports, a lot of the time, it's not just about. Who, what kind of athlete you are. It's just about the fit and where you're playing. There's somebody who moved on from Buffalo where the team wasn't very good for a very, very long time since he was there. And since he's gone to Florida, all his, all he's done is score goals. His, all of his 30-goal seasons have happened in Florida, and now he's has a 50-goal season. So shout was, out Reinhardt, who's I, now a whose contract is expiring. He's going to get a giant payday. It was nice that it was easy for him, too. Like a nice empty netter. 
not so hard. He had to mm-hmm. skate hard for it, but it was nice that I was like, good for you. You need that. Mm-hmm. You deserve that. And by the way, we uh, he was at the Pepsi booth uh, when I was doing the All-Star game. Very nice guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really oh, nice yeah, yeah, you talked so, to He stayed there Brian, for like yeah. way longer than he had to sign in autographs for kids and stuff. Like, really good guy. Yeah. Very nice guy who uh, shouldn't have scored his 50th yesterday. He shouldn't have. Why? Should have been suspended. For what? You see his spinning elbow in Eric Gustafson's oh face. Oh, my in the God. Game? That looks more accidental yeah. than. Rangers fans, here's your ammo. Gregory Campbell, <laughs> assistant GM of the Panthers. His dad works for the league. It was it was bad. The smush on the board is always bad. Like I hate yeah. seeing guys getting smushed like that. But I don't know if it's suspension worthy. Well, for it to not even be a penalty. Yeah, like, yeah, not a penalty is is too much. Um, last person from the weekend we should shout out uh, Riker Evans, who yeah. was the answer <laughs> in Friday's Amazing. SDP of who he play for, scored that night for the Seattle Kraken. We we made it happen. That is unbelievable. Shout out Riker Evans for his first ever NHL goal after being the answer to who he played for. Can we who? play who he played for again this week? Who he's oh, We can for. definitely do that. Yeah. Okay, because I like who he played for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's my favorite. We're going to cause a lot of first career goals. Apparently. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm happy for him. Can you exclusively do Leafs? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, so they all score? Yeah. Who he play for? Matthew Nye. Yeah. <laughs> Austin Matthews is sitting at like 68 goals. Who he play for? <laughs> Austin Matthews. Uh, and then also from Friday's show, we got sent in some Alexander Ovechkin designs. So t- <laughs> this is from... <laughs> Uh, so hold on, let me show. Hold on, this Steve. From, let him let him explain it. This let him is explain from it. at werewolf one on Twitter. They sent in a a uh, like an eight eight and a half by eleven page of Ovechkin different eighty eight nine five OV uh, typefaces. So here we go. We got O O eight V five. Okay. Okay. The one on the top is <laughs> it's it's not bad. How do you not explain bad. it on yeah. audio? <laughs> I'm trying so to yeah. do it. It's the letter O <laughs> and beneath it is another O to and make that an makes eight. it an eight. Yeah. Then it's the V, but they put a bunch of sticks and a like a J on it to make it a nine. <laughs> And then there's the I, which is just one stick, and then they use a bunch of other sticks to make it a five. Yeah. There's two on here that are legitimately incredible. Um, the Alexander the Great, and then the the GR8 goes down to an 895. Yeah. Oh, screw it. There's three. <laughs> the there's, there. there's OV, OVI, and then there's the shadow that makes it 895. <laughs> yeah. I really like that. Yeah. There's OVI uh, vertically and 895 next to it. Eh. So you, it, I like the other one better. It could be O eight V nine I five. It's a little too confusing. Also, I love the bun at the bottom that looks like Obey. Is that Cyrillic? Obechkin. Yeah, this one is. All, I don't even know. It. No, yeah, yeah, it looks too Cyrillic. confusing. The one, I think the one at the top, the one, the first one you described is the best one. That's I think my it favorite. is. Yeah, mm, Alexander it's, the Greatest is also cool. That's a maybe good. the best T-shirt. The top one. Right. A Russian machine. Uh, feel free to talk to this person. Mm-hmm. Also, Maddie, bring that off. I have another one that was also can, sent. Can in. Russian machine have a contest? They should have a contest. This they, one I'm is sure from Benny Don- Donaldson, who also sent this to me on Twitter. <laughs> they said, at Jesse Blake, ideas for the OV record breaking hat design. It is a hat, and they photoshopped onto it 8V9CHK5N. So it kind of spells Ovechkin, but with the 895 in it. Phonetically, it's 8v9. That is is something. Maybe they don't need to sell merch for this. I don't feel like there's an easy solve. No, no. If you go back to the first graphic, the the best one, uh, I think, is Alexander the Great 95. I like that. Alexander the GR 895. Oh, this the, the this bottom, one, bottom right, bottom right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. Alexander the Great nine five. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's annoying about that is he's gonna br- literally break Wayne Gretzky's record, uh-huh. and then we're gonna spend the next few games going. He's five away from nine hundred. That's what I was thinking. Oh, is yeah. like nine hundred seems to be the one to celebrate. Yeah. I, oh, well, you got to celebrate. The I know. I'll well, never know. forgive the New York Rangers for not getting Gretzky to 900. He had nine goals in, well, I think, 63 games or 70-something games in his final year. Pass Wayne the puck. What are you doing? Yeah. You he stink a, anyway. Pass he, him the puck. He was annoyingly pass first. Also, what are the Rangers' excuses for not making the playoffs in Wayne's last year? 
You sign everybody and you go for it. Everybody. You morons. No, it was a bad era for them where they had all the money and signed a whole bunch of players. And Hey, you know how the Leafs sign every over-the-hill player in the league? Why don't we do that? Let's do that, but n- not even as effective as they did it. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Let's give Val Kaminsky some big number, some big money. Remember, they had Burray too. Burray, they had Yager, they Bobby had, Bolique, but that, it, yeah, they had a Th- Theo Fleury. Um, oh boy, yeah, yeah, Theo Fleury had some rough years in New York, but but uh, you know, it was at the time it was a great signing, great signing. He, he had a good run with the player. the Avalanche, like he was good. He was an incredible Av, really underrated Av. They yeah. should have won with him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Jesse, one interesting thing that happened over the weekend was that because we were talking about all this stuff about um, Ovechkin and and what the the number is going to be in the T-shirts and all that. T.J. Oshie played his one thousandth game. Okay, and on Twitter, the Capitals account went with T.J. One K. I like that. Sure. Like, like, not bad. All right, and their T-shirts did not have a funny hashtag design. All they oh. did was just make regular ass t-shirts. They almost and retro. I That'd didn't cool. know it was possible. You can just make a t-shirt without the weird TJ1K going on. And they just made these awesome TJ Oshi 1000th game played t-shirt. That's awesome. Yeah. Dunk- Duncan Keith is still the most unexplainable. D1K? One. Dick? Dick! <laughs> yeah. So if you see under the 1000 there, you can see the TJ1K. But the whole shirt isn't just TJ1K. It's just this little part here where they threw it in so you know what you're celebrating. Are but we in a post- it's just a great t-shirt. Are we in a post-hashtag marketing era? I think so. But it would be nice. Because this is a lot better <laughs> than just the... Oh, it's way better. Dick. Dick. Duncan Keith 1K. <laughs> Dick. Oh, and he's drinking a beer through his shirt. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out the Caps uh, uh, marketers for making a great tea. And one more. If we're on our last thing, I would like to end on on this video, Jesse, that I just sent you via text, um, because this one, I think, is the way that we, we should end every show. And well, I, I have I have the other thing. Do you have other things? Yeah. Because okay. yeah. okay. we haven't even got no, like, questions tea, yet. Give me more tea. Oh, we haven't even asked a question. Let's go yeah. with questions. Oh, OK, hold questions. on. Oh. Uh, don't play this video now. Don't play it now. Okay. Let's go out on this. Ask video. me okay. as many questions as possible. I'm, I'm basically a barnacle right now. I have no brain cells. <laughs> really? I, I love these questions. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, hold, give me one second. Steve, how's Isla? Not rested. No, she's good. She's good. Um, she's, she actually does sleep decently. Um, it's just burning the candle at both ends, right? Going to bed late because I'm feeding her, getting up early because I'm taking Leo to daycare. Uh, she's up to four ounce bottles now. Just crushing. Oh. She's in her bottle crushing era. It, the more they crush, the faster they're going to sleep all night. Full head of hair and friggin' smashing huge bottles. It's This is actually... Baby two in 2024 is unfathomably better than baby one in 2020. I can't even imagine why. What was going on? I I don't know how Leo turned into such a good kid because I was a pretty uh, pretty clueless parent. This one comes from Michael. First question of the press conference. Mm-hmm. Michael says, is Nikki Bob in the playoff lineup? No. No. Damn. No. no. Uh, it's unfortunate, man. Like, he scored last night. He – this is – Last night is why you don't trade him. But the last few games are why you don't put him in the lineup come game one of the playoffs. He's too young and has too good of a shot. Like He has too good of a skill um, to give up on. That doesn't make any sense. Um, like, Would you even recoup a second rounder for him? Which is what you spent to get him? You drafted him in the I don't round? think so. No. Well, then what are you doing trading him? Yeah. yeah. You hold on to him. Uh, because, well, no, you got to get a fourth for it. No, you don't. Because what he could be at his best is more valuable than a fourth. Yeah. So you you hold on to him. Um, but, uh, boy, his own entries on PP2 have been brutal. Um, he, he always performs with Matthews. He's capable of playing up and down the lineup. I like. I mean, you don't, don't play him on the fourth line. What's the point? Here's, here's the thing with Nick is that he's got all the talent. Um, if you're pissed off about being sent down and I respect that you're pissed off, I sure. wouldn't expect you to be happy about it. Then here's an easy one. Take care of the puck. Don't swing at it in the air when it's near someone's head. In oh the my God. Zone. Like that is, that is prime, <laughs> prime nerves. That was bad. Jake Gardner did that. Remember? No, it I don't. Drove me nuts. So it was a game. I think it was against the Kings. Puck is above his head. He swings at it like this. 
So it's going behind the net, Jake. He swings at it, bats it down. He cannot play it. He bats it down. Justin Williams gets it because he's like, oh, look, the puck, and he scores. Jake! (laughs) Why? So, like, when Nick does that, I'm like, okay, I know you didn't mean to high stick that man, but what was the end game there? You you hit the puck with a high stick and then cannot play it, Nick. If you're Nick Robertson, if you're Nick Robertson, the way to get in the lineup for the playoffs is in the neutral zone. Your entire, because we know you can score, and he did score, and that was great. Yeah. His entire game, it's what did Justin Bourne say last night? What are you doing between score and goals? And yeah. and mm-hmm. and where yeah. you see Nick Robertson's mm-hmm. least likable skills is in the offense or sorry in the neutral zone. And it's not because he can't; it's because he hasn't. There are giveaways he said and plays that he does, he said and I'm like really good games. Sure. I, I, dude, I've been the one like I've been beating the Nick Robertson drum all season. Dude, but I'm telling you, if he does not take care of the puck, if if the giveaways continue in the neutral zone, what is Sheldon Keith gonna do? We, you go up against the Florida Panthers, they're gonna eat you alive for that. We overrated this player when he joined the team as an 18 year old in an extremely unique circumstance with COVID. Yep, he is his game is maturing at a perfectly reasonable rate for a 21, 22 year old. Keep him, develop him, he'll be fine. I still think he's going to be a good leaf. I do. Mm -hmm. He should maybe be in the starting lineup next year. Just not these playoffs. He's got to earn that. I agree. Let him earn it. He could still be in the starting lineup for these playoffs, guys. Neutral zone. Watch him in the neutral zone the next 12 games. Let's see what he does. Can't wait for Connor Dewar to score an OT winner in the playoffs. Yeah. All right, this is from Graham. How are the brackets doing? Uh, so the team I had winning it all is out apparently. So after the first weekend of March Madness, let's check in on the SDPN uh, bracket. Challenge. I don't remember any of my picks for the non dick name teams. <laughs> Steve has uh, his his first his chosen team, like the team he picked to win, Kentucky, is out, so he's struggling. Adam Wild also his team that he picked to win is out. Yeah. Washington State, uh, they lost over the weekend. They really let me down. And you're done. You're currently sitting in sixth place out of ten. Uh, Adam and Steve, you're in fifth in in out of out of ten. Drew, hey. producer Drew leads the group. Uh, he's off. Fifty one points of a possible. Well, he's got one hundred and seventy nine points left to possibly get. Tim's in second. Tim Haraney of nailing the apex. Julian McKenzie is in third, and I'm in fourth. And then Steve, Adam, Justin, our sales VP, Christina, Nick from the CJ show, and Maddie rounds out the top ten. Damn, I'm, I'm happy being in sixth, considering I knew nothing. I know nothing. You only got one hundred and two possible points left in your bracket, so you might fall down the standings a little bit. Mm. Yeah. I feel good what, about that. What about me? Uh, producer Drew's first. Yeah, yeah, but he actually watches. Right? Yeah, his uh, his knowledge of uh, of March Madness is a little higher than the average. That's person. why you listen to Drew and Stu. That's right. They, they got their picks out. Um, this one's from Rose Ford. Oh yeah. Did you hear that your assistant to the GM Shane Doan is going to be in Arizona on Tuesday because his son Josh is making his debut for the Coyotes. Josh will be the first player to play for the ASU Sun Devils, the Tuscany Roadrunners, and Arizona Coyotes. First that's of pretty all, cool. uh, that's an incredible fact that I didn't know mm-hmm. about the Sun Devils, Roadrunners, and Coyotes. Second of all, thank you for being a Coyotes fan and still listening to the show. <laughs> Um, because we have not been kind. Yeah, we thought Steve might have gotten rid of I all of them. I we, think we've been fine <laughs> to the Coyotes players. Oh, I don't and the regret team as, as like on the ice. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the other one is I wondered, uh, well, cause I saw Josh Doan was getting called up and I wondered if Shane Doan was going to go down there and he is. And I think that's bloody wonderful. Yeah. That that's, is great. That's a great daddy moment. It is. Yeah. I can't wait for, uh, Leo's uh, NHL debut. Yeah, it's going to be great. Last question comes from Barris Fueler. What happened to those apples, Adam? So you lost a number of bets where you had to owe us apples. Oh, and I you forgot. never brought them in. You're right. I did. Yeah, you yeah. did. All right, Apple Bet. We did not. Now, wait, one of these days, I'm going to remember. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I completely I forgot know. about that. Thank you for reminding me. 
Uh, now well, are we ready for the video? Sure. sure. All right. We can play this now, video. Now, listen, when you're in your 50s and 60s and, and you know, you've done a good chunk of your career, maybe you're more comfortable and you're excited about life, this is how I want your life to be. Wayne Gretzky and Anna Jones. Oh, uh, we got to yeah, just we gotta, yeah, yeah. Wayne Gretzky and his wife just dancing. Look at Wayne. Look at him. That yeah. is a dad ass Dance move. Dude, that's that really is the most Wayne? gifted <laughs> hockey player in human history. Yep. And that's his wife. And they're just having a good time. Good for them. Basically immobile hips. <laughs> but free. <laughs> so free. There is a way ex hockey players walk. Yeah. And and it's the hips, right? They go, you know, you know who doesn't walk like that is Gary Roberts. No. You see Gary not. Roberts walk and it's like he's 20. But uh yeah. <laughs> Gretzky's having so much fun. Robert's probably wakes that, up man. stiff as a board every morning and then just stares at his body in the mirror and goes, move! And then it does. <laughs> There's another you know? guy that could that could probably uh, uh, boil water with his eyes. Oh, it's, it, all his joints go, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I feel like Gretzky's living like a fun life. Oh, he is. You know, he is. just going on TV, talking stuff, Doing well. going home, dancing. Do you think any of those traveling. people behind him know who that is? Probably. I think people know who Wayne Gretzky is. I don't know. They're not l watching Wayne Gretzky dance. Well, they're at a bar with Wayne Gretzky, which means they can afford to be at whatever country club yeah. he's at, which means they're probably just as rich as he is. Oh, right. yeah. They call him Wayne. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know where he is. Mr. So. Gretz. Also, That's it's clearly a very warm setting, and he's got a sweater and a, and a shirt on with a collar underneath it. And I just think, man, I'd be so hot. And jeans. I'd be boiling. I, how is that the first place your mind went? There's something wrong with you. I know. It's because I get hot really easy. Adam, that's why I'm you, usually wearing t-shirts. You got like a condition, bro. Like, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. It's, I don't know what the condition would be, but it's just... Hot, sweaty boy. Hot, sweaty boy. Is that the, uh, yeah. the medical? Okay, yeah. Well, I would be... I, can, I can't wear that in the winter. You have terminal hot, sweaty boy. I do. I do. It would be too much. That's unbelievable. It would be way too much. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.